What's up, everybody? It's Ivan with Trout's Fly Fishing, back with a forecast for May 27th. <coughs> Done a little location change here to the garage. I needed some sunlight. The, the basement was getting a little bit, uh, a little bit too dark for me, especially during these wonderful spring, late spring, early summer months. I want to see the sun. So out in the garage doing a little tinkering. I haven't been on the water in the last two weeks, so I might not be the best person to talk about what is happening and what's going to be happening. Luckily, I was able to uh, talk to some of our guides and see what they're experiencing, talk to some guys in the shop and uh, sort of get a good idea. So I'll be the middleman for this episode and probably for the next couple episodes. Uh, if, you had, if you didn't know, if I hadn't already mentioned it, uh, my wife is pregnant with our second kid uh, and... Obviously, with school being closed, you know, juggling all the th all the things, so uh, probably seen a, l a distinct lack of on the water content uh, on the YouTube, on our blog, all that stuff. And it's because I'm sort of uh, in this uh, lockdown post, you know, as as the safer from home locked uh, order is being lifted here in Colorado, I am still here at home, sort of trying to man the man the fort, make sure uh, I'm here for when number two arrives. So. Uh, appreciate you guys being patient. You know, hopefully we'll be able to return to some uh, regular, regularly scheduled on the water content here shortly. Um, but yeah, for the time being, you know, a little less than a month out, I'm, uh, I'm staying close to home, and uh, that means means I have to be within cell phone range, and I can't be like an hour and a half, two hours away. So, is what it is. Uh, like any true suburban dad, I'm just sitting here at my workbench tinkering with stuff, waiting for the next time I'm going to go fishing. So I'm going to be wildly more organized than I've ever been in my entire life uh, because I'm just sitting here tinkering, making sure all my leaders are straight, making sure my fly boxes are organized. Uh, shout out to all the suburban dads out there. Uh, I, I, get, I get the struggle now. I get the struggle. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, let's talk about fishing, what you're probably tuned in for as opposed to the Yvonne life update. Um... Oh yeah, one other thing before we get to fishing. Five Flies for June should be coming out next week and uh, very excited to have, you know, hopefully I'll be able to sneak out a little bit, sort of bend the rules a little bit and get uh, some on the water content. Um, you know, still staying within cell phone range, still being able to um, you know, be close to home, but you know, hopefully we'll be able to get some on the water content and very excited to have uh, this month's host back with us. So. Uh, stay tuned for that exciting stuff. I know that I'm I'm excited. Whole whole team's excited. So stay tuned for Five Flies next week for June. Uh, let's talk about fishing uh, over the last couple of weeks, what we've seen, and then what uh, what to look forward to going forward. So so last time we talked, we talked a lot about uh, you know how runoff seemed to start, and uh, you know it's about picking and choosing your battles. Uh, making sure you're paying attention to the weather and how that is going to affect flows, especially in the high country when you're looking at the freestones. Um, and in the last week, we've seen some cooler weather, and a lot of the flows, while they're up from what they were two weeks ago, have dropped significantly over the last uh, week. And so that's meant that water is cleared, fishing, you know, water temperatures are coming back up, and fishing has been very productive. You know, obviously, uh, I, you know, I, we've all heard rumors and I've seen pictures from friends that the salmon flies are starting to be seen on the Colorado, um, you know, pump house up to, you know, you know, should be moving up to Byers Canyon here um, as it you know, progresses upstream. And that's obviously good, but, you know, you have really productive fishing on the Eagle right now, uh, on the Arkansas, um, you know, you can find some really good fishing with this clearing water. So as a general rule, anytime you get bigger water, dirtier water of the spring runoff, you know, higher up in the uh, watershed is a better a bet, better bet, but uh, we've had some really good fishing over the last week on the freestones and the tailwaters have continued to produce as they normally do. Um, looking forward though, we're not necessarily looking back, this is the forecast, so looking forward, we do have some warmer weather, especially in the high country, uh, predicted for the next week plus. Uh, so I would expect flows to start rising. So there is this little window now where you should see some really fishable water. And then I'm assuming that flows will bump back up and it's going to be off color, colder water, and a little bit tougher fishing. So for the general, general, uh, 
you know, for, in general, the fish are going to, you know, still elevated flows, so fish are going to be pushed to the side. Uh, freestone or tailwaters just say, uh, you know, tailwaters are still, you know, relatively low, and actually deckers, blow deckers and cheesemen just dropped uh, in the past couple days, and it looks like it's probably on the rise, but, uh, you know, it's been fishing really well, and it's been super productive, so we'll uh, get to that. And like we've done in the past couple episodes, uh, we're going to do weather, flows and then bugs so weather sort of dictates everything at this point this time of year so might as well start with weather let's do it all right weather so the next 10 days looking at deckers uh 70s and then into the 80s by friday and it's going to rain in the 80s through next tuesday and then start to you'll have a cooler day 77 on wednesday and then pump back up into the 80s uh, so you should expect it to be a little bit cooler up at Deckers as opposed to Celia, but um, you know, that's actually the Nighthawk station. So uh, that's pretty warm weather. That's, you know, we're getting towards the summer, uh, towards the time of year where you know, it's going to be warm there during the day. So, uh, you know, PM sun thunderstorms uh, predicted every day, isolated thunderstorms sort of, uh, you know, par for the course when it comes to, uh, you know, summertime weather. So... You know, expect some isolated thunderstorms um, and you know some warmer weather you know lows in the mid 50s so that's Deckers let's look at Vale as our sort of proxy for the high country um, and over the last week I think the highs only hit like the highest high was 61 very much lower uh, than is required to start melting a lot of that high snow. So that's why you saw that drop in flows in a lot of those rivers uh, over the last week. But over the next 10 days, looking at highs in the mid 70s, you know, a couple of days of 69, you know, lows in the mid to upper 40s, uh, that means snow is going to be melting up high and you're going to start to see bumps in flows. Uh, obviously, the earlier you get out, um, from the time of this taping to, um, you know, this, you know, this weekend is going to be a little touch and go from my perspective, but you do have a window where flows are a little bit lower and, uh, you know, fishing has been really productive, not necessarily because it's low, because it's dropped and it's dropped the sediment and you've started to see some warmer water because you don't have all that snow melt. So that's the weather. Let's get to the flows. All right, flows. So Deckers stayed pretty steady and then dropped over the last couple of days down to 165 and she dropped below 165, but now it looks like it's bumping today. Uh, 11 miles stayed pretty steady, 55, oh, sorry, 55.1 and Dream 71.6. So those are pretty steady and you know, that means you're looking at lighter tippet. Uh, with Deckers, I don't know if that dip is related to uh, upcoming flow releases uh, on the North Fork, but um, I would expect the Deckers flows to jump back up. So, um, you know, if they stay steady, I would, you know, use leeches as a head. We're get I'm getting ahead of myself, but if we they stay steady, uh, caddis, leeches, blue wings, midges, uh, if they bump back up, scuds, and eggs and worms and leeches, and then, you know, caddis and stuff. But I'm getting ahead of myself. That's the bug section. Uh, freestones. So freestones, Eagle 1020. So that's above what it was when we last checked in, but it is has dropped significantly in the last week. Uh, Kremlin 1760, Salida, Arkansas Salida 1340. So uh, I believe, yeah, I believe, let me double check, with the Arkansas Salida, Sort of, sort of staying steady, but the uh, Colorado at Kremlin is has dropped significantly over the last week or so. So uh, there's a nice little window. Obviously, salmon flies are here uh, on the Colorado. <clears throat> um, before we get to bugs, I do want to talk about salmon flies and my personal opinion on salmon flies. I think salmon flies are awesome. Who wouldn't want to catch fish on the biggest foam bug in your box? But I think like you have to be realistic about the sandfly hatch, especially on the Colorado. It's hard to time. It's a little bit sporadic. You know, they sort of focus around the pump house and, you know, Gore Canyon area, and then they'll go up to Byers Canyon and you'll see them in between. Uh, but hitting 
the dry hitting a good dry fly day on the sand on sand flies can be tough. Um, you know, you'll see them emerge. They'll be all over the branches. You won't necessarily see them fly, flying around, and fish won't key in on them. So it's going to be hard to get dry fly eats. Uh, you could also hit it after they've all you know sort of flown around and done their thing and fish have keyed in on them. They might be full, and, or you could hit it before they start to you know fly around. So. Uh, I think salmon flies are some of the most, or probably one of the most difficult hatches to time in terms of getting good dry fly fishing because it's such a small period of time where you can really lock in on them. And I think if you really want to pattern, it's sort of a crapshoot if you're just going, if you're a weekend warrior like myself, you know, if you're going up there and you want to try to hit salmon flies, you pick a spot where you think they might be, try to do as much research as you can, talk to friends who've been up and you know, try to pattern where they might be and you know try to luck into it uh but if you really want to hit it i you know and i was talking about with this with zeke like i think for joe schmo for average angler like you know weekend warrior like myself you're lucky probably if you go try to catch salmon flies on the colorado your your dry fly eats you're probably looking at like a one to ten percent chance you're going to run into like that banger dry fly day um if you really want to get it, if you really want to hit it and catch them on dries, you have to be out there for like the a two week period, like call work, call off work, focus in on it, and you know try to sort of lock it in and you know hop up and down the river. So um, that's what I I mean. I think the sand flatch is awesome. Those big bugs, you can still even if you don't hit the good dry fishing, you can still catch them. Um, you know, nymphs, they'll still be, those fish will still be in on the banks. So shearers can be super productive, uh, but, you know, temper your expectations uh, this time of year. And I think we all get really excited about dry flies, big dry fly eats. Not, they won't always uh, coincide. You won't always necessarily uh, smoke them. In fact, more often than not, you're going to be smoking them on dry droppers and uh, not necessarily just single dries. So that's something to consider. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I just think um, we get really amped up for that hatch. I think Golden Stones are more reliable in terms of getting eats, especially because that's going to be typically after runoff and you know, you're not going to have as much variability in flows. The one thing I will say is over the last week, and then if we do continue to see a downward trend, um, this would be one of the more fishable uh, salmon fly hatches we've had in a couple years. So all that Debbie Downing, da Dannering for myself, I should temper with the uh, little bit of positivity. Flows are really good, so keep that in mind. So I'm obviously a little bit all, all over the place, a little ahead of myself. That was weather. Let's get to bugs. All right, all right bugs. I usually try to keep this short and, short and sweet, but I have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I should probably put twenty on there. Twenty. Twenty flies, both free stones and tailwaters. So <clears throat> free stones, certainly expecting some bumps and flows with uh, upcoming warmer weather. Uh, with that in mind, bigger flies are going to be, bigger heavy flies are going to be a good option. So I have past rubber legs, bitch creek, 20 incher, mop flies, say what you will, they get down and they catch fish. Uh, Prince nymphs, and then like a jigged hare's ear. So you know, generally bigger flies, the jigged hare's ear, if you can find, if you can fish jigged varieties of eight, like a jigged prince, you know, those flies are going to get down a little bit faster. You can also obviously use, they're still going to be eating blueing olives and caddis. That's why I put the hare's ear in there for the caddis. But uh, for the most part, they're going to be eating bigger bugs. Um, and it's going to be easier to keep them sort of tight, keep tension on them, especially when they get into some of the heavier water. So you can certainly, they certainly will eat small flies, especially when you get a bump of water in that colder Water comes down and you're going to see more necessarily more blueing olives uh, being present uh, subsurface. But um, I find it very difficult to try to horse a fish in and keep them out of the heavy current if I'm going to be fishing a uh, small fly.
Uh, streamers, black, flashy, olive if you want. It won't be me. Obviously, it won't be me because I'm <laughs> locked down, but uh, wouldn't, couldn't, wouldn't catch me fishing olive, but I know certainly can catch fish. Uh, and then if you do run into some dry fly fishing, uh, Chubby Chernobyl, always a go -to, good go-to. Also a good uh, fly to throw if you're you know, working the edges on the Arkansas, the Eagle, um, you know, the Colorado. If you want to work the edges and fish dry droppers, Chubby Chernobyl is a good option. Then the 64 Impala for the salmon flies. Uh, tailwaters, I have, so it depends. If we see continued lower flows uh, throughout the South Platte, it's going to be more of a techie game. And, you know, having RS2s, having Juju Betas, Mercury Midges, um, you know, Bars Emerger, Splat Roller, those are going to be good options. Uh, if they bump the flows, you know, introduction of the leech, so Pine Squirrel Leech, um, you know, buckskin for caddis. I don't know if I mentioned that already. Scuds will be back on the menu, so like a UV scud. Um, you know, crane fly larva would be a, a, a good option as well. And obviously worms, eggs, and the like. Uh, the other thing I should mention, so if the flows stay relatively low or they you know, don't bump too much, um, towards the middle of June, you start to see PMDs play a bigger role. So. Uh, I put a PMD, a bars emerger in the PMD variety, and then a PMD sparkle done. So 16s, 18s, 14s on the big side. But um, you generally start to see PMDs in the middle of uh, middle of June. So you know whether that be subsurface or surface remains to be seen. You'll still see blueing olives. Midges will still be pre you know midges and blueing olives pretty much present year round. So always be prepared with those. Uh, you know caddis are going to be you know. You're going to start to see a different variety of caddis, but caddis are going to be there you know, now through the end of summer. Uh, they're going to be present, so good good option to have those on as well. So those are your flies. Uh, I ranted about the salmon flies. I will also say, uh, if they're not eating adult salmon flies, um, I have had some of my best streamer days in May, early June, when you have those drops and flows, and you can you know stay in close to the bank and swing that bank. So work flies up the bank because fish are going to be stacked in the bank, and uh, you know you can have some really good streamer days. So keep that in mind, especially for the free stones. Even when it's super off color, you know especially if you go the higher you go, um, you know the clearer it's going to be, and you know the more likely you're going to find a willing and active fish. Where sometimes you know the water gets a little dirtier down low, and it's a little bit harder for them to chase that down. So keep that in mind. Hope you guys have a good two weeks on the water. Uh, I will remind you guys. So we are open. Uh, both shops are open. Um, you know, pretty close to normal business hours. We you know maintaining social distancing. You know, masks are required. We do have. You can schedule appointments, so you can come into the shop and schedule appointments. We also you know, do offer curbside pickup. Um, so you can either call in 303-733-1434 or order something online and then have it, uh, for curbs to pick up. And of course we ship as well. So that's all going on. Uh, we also have, um, staff pick flies. So, you know, three people in the shop at once, three customers in the shop at once, you know, sometimes during the busy, busy days, uh, that can be. You know, can result in a little bit longer of a wait. If you do a staff pick flies for a fishery, we're going to be expanding the number of fisheries we have. Uh, so stay tuned. I think that should be coming out tomorrow. Um, staff pick plot flies. You could order that curbside. You could call that in curbside, and you know pick it up, and you don't have to worry about waiting outside. So uh, use utilize the staff pick flies. I'll leave the link in the bio for that. And uh, yeah. Hope you guys are doing well. I know the safer from home order is expiring to has expired today, uh, which means that uh, mobility around the state is going to increase. Uh, no longer is the you know goodbye you know recreating within 10 miles, um, you know, so a little bit more freedom there. Also, uh, Rocky Mountain National Park is going to start to open up um, from now through the 3rd of June, and you're going to start to see it really open up from the 3rd of June on. So. Uh, high country lakes are going to start to become a possibility because as the snow melts up in the high country, that means those lakes start to uh, open up. So keep that in mind. Uh, try to keep you updated on the website. If you have any questions, give us a call. 
as I mentioned, 303-733-1434. Hope you guys are having a good week and enjoy your uh, upcoming week on the water. Let me know how it goes. I'm Jones, and it's been two weeks without fishing, and I'm going crazy. All right, see you guys.